This presentation is to accompany the book, Consumer Behavior, A Primer, by Gail Tom. A common nursery rhyme says, Little girls are made of sugar and spice and everything nice. Little boys are made of snakes and snails and puppy dog tails. When a baby is born, one of the first questions asked is, is it a boy or a girl? And from that moment, the baby is treated differently. We bring baby boys presents like blue blankets, clothes decorated with footballs, baseballs, cowboys, trucks. We bring baby girls presents like pink blankets, clothes decorated with flowers, ballerinas, bows, and ribbons. Even parents, with a philosophy to raise their children gender neutral, behave differently with their sons and daughters. For example, when they tell a story to a daughter, they use more adjectives than when they tell the story to their son. Parents are very surprised to learn that this is what they do. It was certainly unintentional. Gender is an important component to our self-concept. Are men and women different primarily due to nature, that is, biological determinants, or nurture, cultural determinants? The results of some research shed some light on the nature versus nurture question. In the United States, perfect pitch is a trait only a small percentage of people have. Among Chinese, it is a much higher percentage. However, it's not genes that account for this variation. It's the tonality of the language. Chinese is a tonal language. Developing perfect pitch is more likely to occur if you have to pay attention to the differences in tones in order to learn a language. In the 1960s and 1970s, the scientific wisdom was that nurture ruled. What mattered was the person's environment, his culture, how the person was raised. Today's understanding suggests that self-concept is not nurture versus nature. Self-concept is nature and nurture. A person's gender is biological. Gender roles, or how a man or woman is supposed to act, is defined by his or her culture. For example, male roles have changed. The role of dad has evolved. I mean, I can't say for myself if, if it will play out this way when I'm older and, uh, you know, whether I'll get married, whether I will be able to have kids like I'm hoping, but, um, you know, I would definitely want to have a more egalitarian situation. I would want my wife to feel comfortable going to work. I would feel comfortable staying home, you know. I don't think that I could dedicate such a, a large portion of my life just to, you know, ensuring that my, my children are, 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 like, safe with at home with one of our parents. Like, I have no problem if my wife doesn't want to be a stay-at-home, my future wife doesn't want to be a stay-at-home mom because I'm perfectly, I would completely agree with her. Exactly. <laughs> and I don't think it's just because that you're a man because I really don't want to be a stay-at-home mom. I don't, and I'm sorry. I, I, but you know what? I feel a little guilty about saying that. And I wonder what that means, you know? The fact that I'm like, you know, I say that to people and people are like, oh, I guess you're just not very maternal. And I'm like, oh, oh I... I mean, maybe I'm not maternal, but maybe I just, I just don't want to stay home all day. I just know that that wouldn't make me very happy. The most important part and the most impressionable period of a child's life is the earlier years. So if I'm sending my kid to daycare when they're two years old, then I'm going to kind of feel like I'm not having the impact on this kid's life that I should. And that my relationship with this kid could be compromised because of this. Wherever my career is, I think I'd still go and, you know, pause it wherever I was and become a mom. Let's say you were making more money than your husband. How do you think that might shake up? Um, I would, I would support him if he wanted to stay home and be with the kids. Since I'm in a serious relationship, that's actually been kind of something I've been thinking about a lot lately because it looks like I might make more money than him eventually. So I actually wanted to be a stay-at-home mom originally. I actually looked forward to that. So um, I'm kind of disappointed that I may not be able to and I'll have to like do a job. Not that I don't want to, but I want to raise my kids more because my parents didn't do that. Whoever's making the more money should be the one 
working because I, I think, you know, as sad as it is, money makes the world go round. And, you know, to provide for your child, you need that money. So whether it be the male or the female, uh, it, it doesn't really matter to me. I would, I would be a stay-at-home dad if it meant it was the best thing for my child. I, I really don't care about that. Uh, may, maybe for some, some guys that would be a problem, but uh, it's really it, the whole idea of parenting is what's best for the child. So I, I believe that would be best for the child. Thirty years from now, I think I think our children will are going to be the kind of fathers that we are prescribing today. I think that our our sons are going to grow up assuming, as young men are today, assuming that their wives are going to are going to work, are going to assume that their wives are going to be as equally committed to their careers as they are, are going to assume that if they're going to have families, they're going to have families where they are going to be equal partners. I, I'll give you one example of how I think this is going to look. How this is going to look. Twenty years ago, when I started teaching about these sorts of issues. I would ask my students, what are you going to do to balance work and family if you get married, if you're straight, if you get married, if you have children? The women would say, 20 years ago, the women would say, we're going to love each other. It's going to work out. And the men would say, huh? Like the question didn't even register for them. Now I ask my students, what are you going to do to balance work and family? The women say, well, First, I'm going to have my first kid, but I'm only going to take four months off because I want to get right back to work because I really want to keep my career going. But then when I have my second kid, that's when I'm going to take five years off because I really want to be there for both the kids when they're developing. And then I'm going to go back to my work because I'll have already made it you know, possible for my career trajectory for me to come right back. So the women have it all planned out. The men, they say, we're going to love each other. It's going to work out. What I get from this is two things. The men are where the women were 20 years ago, but the question now makes sense to them. The question is meaningful. They know that they have to start thinking about this. They started where the women started, but they're going to get, they're going to think about it a lot differently. I think that's the trajectory that we're looking at. I think kids today are assuming the kind of things that we had to fight for, just as we assumed the kind of things that our mothers and fathers had to fight for. My grandparents had to fight for the women's right to vote, to serve on juries. Women take that for granted. My mother's generation had to fight for the right to go to law school, to go to medical school, to become journalists. You know, they assume that. This generation, we're fighting for the right of men to be equal parents and still feel like real men. Our children are going to take that for granted. The book Chick for a Day asked men what they would have been like if they had been born a woman instead of a man. Would they have been gorgeous, generous, nurturing, physically strong, athletic? The book Dick for a Day asked women what they would have been like if they were born a man instead of a woman. Would they have the same personality, the same values, 